So your mind's made up, is it? We'll be leaving for Rosaria as soon as we're able. Back down memory lane, eh? Rosaria ain't what she used to be, Clive. Not since the Imperials moved in. First sign of trouble, you make straight for Martha's rest and ask for the landlady. She's a friend of the cause. Tell her you with Sid, and she'll help you out. Understood. Thank you, Gav. Yeah. I'd be lost without you. Yeah, I'm just doing my job. No need to make such a fuss. You take care, all right? Oh, I'm crap at goodbyes. Where's Sid when you need him? Give him my regards when he gets back. I will. Sorry to keep you waiting. Ready, my lady? Ready. Rosaria, it's been 13 years. But this breeze, the smell of the grass, it's just as I remember it. You haven't been back either. I couldn't. Rand did keep a close watch on each other in the Imperial Army. You get beheaded just for knowing a deserter. The only way out was on a mission. I see. Mostly I was afraid. Afraid to go back. I know. But I'm here now. to you. We should press on. That inn at the top of the hill must be Martha's rest. Gav said the landlady's a friend. But can we say the same for her patrons? Imperials don't tend to take well to those with my mark. If anyone asks, I'm a branded soldier, sworn to protect my noble mistress. And we're off. Now it seems like it's going to be a pretty common thing for... Her. Where the hell is she going? Pretty common thing where you're going to have only one or two companions, and one of them is going to typically be Torgal. So one companion will get switched out for another. So we were playing with Sid before, and now we have Jill with us. It's probably going to stay like that or something like that for the rest of the game. Now, neither of these characters have had particularly easy lives. Now, the Clive, when, when he was a kid, had to sort of go survive along with the knowledge that Although he was a royal and he lived in the castle and all that kind of stuff, he was essentially like the less favorite son because he wasn't understood to be a dominant and therefore he was never going to inherit the throne. But, you know, he did have a rather um, cushy upbringing. Though he did show an interest. He, he was trying to become one of the... one of, like, the king's bearers. And he really just sort of saw himself in that role. So when Joshua went to heal him, he's like, no, you can't waste your magic on me. I'm just one of your bearers here. 
but then wasn't that bad, really. However, once he thought his brother was killed, and it's pretty clear that it's Joshua. They even show his face now, so they've they've given up the given up the secret on that one. Once he thought Joshua was dead, he was essentially enslaved and forced into fighting and conscripted into this sort of army where he's fighting for the people who killed his family. And he's been living in that for 13 years, just sort of seething with hatred at the thought of this person who killed his brother. And that's that's no way to live. And he finally escaped. Now, Jill, we haven't heard as much about her, just a little bit of her backstory that she filled us in with. But she was taken from her family when she was young, and she was brought into this other family that seemed to have treated her well enough. And... When Rosaria fell, however, she was taken by the Iron Blood, and that did not work out any better for her than it did for Clive when he was taken prisoner. She was conscripted into their army. I, I, I guess she figured that she was just going to be raped and killed, but and maybe that did happen. Maybe she wasn't killed, obviously, but she thought she was eventually going to end up being killed, but they discovered her power, and basically conscripted her into their military similar to the way Clive. They didn't understand the extent of Clive's power, which is why he was just sort of like one of these uh, foot soldier guys. Jill, on the other hand, her people were threatened with death and, and she was forced to comply with them and turn into Shiva in order to fight for them. So they had similar background. Similar things happened to them. And I guess that is something of connection that they may have as the story goes on. They both understand each other's pain and that he could end up bringing them closer. Seems as though Jill is definitely going to be the love interest in this story though. Although the Final Fantasy games have drifted away from the whole hero always has to have a love interest thing ever since Final Fantasy 10. Like, 12 didn't have it, and 13 didn't have it. They never finished building the bridge then. After what happened at Phoenix Gate, it didn't seem the highest priority. There's no hard rule that the Final Fantasy game's main character has to have a love interest, but it's just something that seems like it's going to happen here. I doubt this is going to be platonic between the two of them. Here, you couldn't give me an iron, could you? Typical. A bloody bearer. And just when I thought my luck had changed. Still, better a crumb of crystal than an empty hand, I suppose. Though it pains me to use another man's branded. Here, you understand me, don't you? I need your help. These blasted birds must have caught whiff of my cargo, and now they've got me surrounded. And it was really late as it was. I've got something special needs delivering before the rest, but I dare not leave my cart untended. You couldn't run it up to Martha's rest for me, could you? Needs to get there a quick mind. Fine. That's the spirit. All right. Here. You hand that to the stable master and no one else. I'm owed a little something for it. If he gives it to you, pass it along to your master by way of thanks. Be off with you then, and don't go taking any detours on the way. Perhaps I'm overthinking this a little bit, but it does seem like, given the history that the two of them have had for the past 13 years, their entire adult life, that being prisoners and being conscripted and, and more or less not having any freedom or anything to pursue their own interests that neither one of them has any real experience with sort of romantic relationships so it's possible that this whole thing between them will be a kind of an unhealthy relationship i'm probably overthinking that although i, I guess sort of not really because okay let's i'm going off topic a little bit here final fantasy 7 had 
Cloud and Tifa. Now, it left it a little bit ambiguous on at the end on whether Cloud or Tifa would have a relationship together or not. But what they did have, this sort of mutual attraction between them, was definitely an unhealthy thing because both of them had essentially lied to themselves and lied to each other about the nature of their relationship as children. So Tifa, in her mind anyway, had a close relationship with Cloud and the two of them were friends and Tifa had effectively um, fallen in love with him, but it was not like genuine in a way because she sort of built it up in her mind. She has a sort of like a fantasy of a knight in shining armor coming to protect her and save her and all that. And Cloud was more or less the object of that fantasy. And that is what allowed her to build up in her head this idealized past that the two of them had together, that they were close friends, and there was some strong foundation of a relationship there. Cloud was also sort of twisted in his head about a lot of things, including his relationship with Tifa. So it's possible that like their connections weren't real, and their connections weren't healthy in any way. And maybe that's the reason why they didn't show that coming to fruition at the end of the story because it, it just wasn't there was something not right about that and they could be doing something here too are you the stable master i was asked to deliver this to you this is for me right enough not sure what some bearer is doing bringing it to me though Where's that fool of a peddler got to? He couldn't come himself. His cart surrounded by wild chocobos. Hmm. Huh. Sounds about right. I'll have it full of Gizal greens, no doubt. Crammed with him, if I know him. Gizal greens. Chocobos go mad for them, don't they? And if you forget to seal the cart up tight, the smell gets out, and birds come running from miles around. Don't get me wrong. They're a fine investment for a savvy merchant, especially around these parts. But you can't get greedy, as our mutual friend is learning the hard way. Still, I got my wares, and that's all that matters. Be sure to pass your master my regards. Well, we've arrived, and it seems like a good place to end the episode, so thanks for watching.